Nice group. I'm Linda Dano. Welcome. Hi, I'm Dee Kelly. Welcome to Attitude. Now, uh, we want to explain because you're all going to wonder what this is on Dee's hand. She, right. she has had an accident this morning. Yes. Uh, a toaster attacked me right here. I shouldn't My lie. hand. Oh, That's it right there. Honey. It's underneath. Little third degree burn. So watch those toasters, everybody. But it's really fine. We got an aloe vera plant in the dressing yeah, room. And it's working. And it's healing like crazy. So My by mother the end will of be happy show, to hear that. End of the show, I'll be great. Thank you very much for caring. But we have she's much more cute. important things on our she's mind. She's in pain and she <laughs> doesn't be so bad. Ah! No, yeah. it's all right. No, no, no. I'm really fine. No, no. We've given her a few things. It's all right. <laughs> My teeth have yeah. worn down a little since before. All right. We, we have a, a wonderful show. A we, wonderful we have show. A, a first guest that we'll go into later that we're real excited about. We have other things that we, we think is going to be a good show. Yeah, we have environmental mm -hmm. products. Right. Today we're going to learn how, what, what we can do at home simply and conveniently to help with the, make an impact on our environment for the better. Very interesting. We also have three quite remarkable ladies who have had cancer and they've done something together that... Um, you would never ever dream about. That has changed their lives and you'll, you'll meet them and we'll talk to them and find out how they're doing, okay? You know how we always have on Attitudes our Attitudes alternative to aerobics. Well, we have another one today. That's right, <laughs> but it's Afro-American aerobics and it is fun. We rehearsed it and it's really, it's not only And beautiful. the ladies are nice and they, 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 I don't think they're into pain. No, they're into great shape right. and, and fun right. and beauty. So. I might be able to actually do this one. Oh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Could be scary, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I might find my exercise today. I warned them, but <laughs> no. I don't think they're ready. But are we ready for our first guest? Yeah, let's meet her. Definitely. Our first guest is an old friend of Attitudes. She's been on the show several times. And each time, as we talked with her about her phenomenal success, we thought, this has got to be it. She's absolutely reached her pinnacle. Not so. Her star is definitely on the rise. She's gone from fashion superstar to meteoric hei heights, and her sleek designs have propelled her company's earnings into the stratosphere. She's a savvy woman, hot and getting hotter. She's Manhattan. She's prima donna. Please join with us and welcome the one and only Donna Karen. <laughs> Well, since I last saw you, how's it going? I mean, I, I, I read about you all the time. You are the busiest thing on two feet. Are you just exhausted? Are you crazy at this point, or is it still fun? Well, I'm not really <laughs> sure. It's like every six weeks, you're crazy, yeah. you know. We have a collection that opens right now every six weeks. I know that. It's getting more and more. They get closer and closer, the weeks. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. Do you it. ever have enough time in a day? I can't imagine that people need that many clothes. <laughs> I know. Of your clothes. I know. I don't think it's, it's mine, but it really is fascinating to know that I don't think people realize, you know, what a designer needs to do. You know, the clothes arrive there. Yeah. Yeah. And keep the clothes in stock. I was very curious. Did you sew as a little kid? No. Never? No. Who, did anyone in your family? My father was in fashion, and so was my mother, but um, nothing to do technically. But, it, you know, it was the, there was an aura of fashion always around me. Did you know when you were a child that you were mm. going to be a fashion designer? What you want to be? Probably a dancer. Did you? Right. Well, I didn't know that. No, absolutely. That's, I think, my love for the bodysuit and, you know, and that whole and kind of body language and comfort come from. Because, you know, for me, there's nothing more comfortable than a leotard and tights. Yeah. How, did, how did the fashion mean? start? Probably the exposure, I was artistic. Right. And, but I think between the artisticness and body language, the two things really work together. And uh. I think that's what fashion is about, is the communication of one's body, you know, into it's, fashion. It's an amazing combination of that kind of anchor effect when, if you've ever worn one of Donna's blouses or bodysuits, 
you com you put it on, you look beautiful, and then you totally forget about it, which right. is the greatest yeah. thing of all. That's really people say to me, "Why do you do the bodysuit?" Oh. And it really is a foundation, and it sort of takes instant pounds off of you. Well, Don't we have to tell you, Linda, you must tell her I about have to tell Frank. you this story. This is I'm the, living in a trailer, you know, on the weekends. And, and Frank is there all week long because we're putting up this house. So we have a minimal amount of clothes in the, in the trailer. Right. So Saturday night I was in California and he was at the trailer and he had been invited by the grace of God to someone's home for dinner and he couldn't take a shower because all the electrical went out. So he decided he'd put on some clean clothes. He went to the closet, he took out a shirt, he put it on, it was my body. <laughs> Right. Yours. <laughs> and he said, what the, what is this, what is this thing, thing hanging, hanging down? down? And he thought it was his shirt that somehow I had so done something with. He wanted with. to wear it. And I said to him, fun? did you wear it? He said, no, it was a little big. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, love it. Great. So you That's see, fabulous. you're into men's fashions now and didn't know it. Men have asked me to do it, which I, I find fascinating. And I'm saying, you know, I'm trying to figure out the fitting. But uh. Speaking of men, you have a wonderful husband. Tell us about him. His name is Stephen. Stephen Weiss. Uh, he really is a terrific guy. He, he's sort of my anchor. Here he is, right here. The two of you on a motorcycle. It's a great oh, shot. Yeah, yeah, he's adorable. He's adorable. You really met a long cute. time ago. Mm-hmm. A definite early love of mine and uh, continues to be, which is really wonderful. I don't know how you he's find an the artist, time. He's an artist, which is kind of wonderful. He's a sculptor. So we are both talking about the three-dimensional form. Yeah. You know, which is, oh, is kind of wonderful, and he takes it from an artistic level, and I take it from a commercial level. Yeah. But I think it, it's, it's really great when you have two people like that sure. who can work together. Donna, seriously, when you, your life is so hectic right now, and I, I, I wonder about the person. You have a, a, a daughter, Gabby, mm -hmm. and, and your husband, and I know he works with you, but still, is there ever some quiet time? No. Never. No. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I try to make quiet time. You know what I find is absolutely wonderful is the summertime. You know, that's why I, I'm holding on to summer. I don't want fall to come. You know, it's that one time when you get out to the beach. For me, it is. I get out to the beach and, uh, you know, for whatever has to happen, you know, the summer weekends are always there. At least I try to make yeah, them always there. Good. They seem to get smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller, but, you know, it is that time. I think everyone feels good in the summertime, you know, that, yeah. that sunshine and fresh air and things. Yeah. And I do spend time with my family there. And I don't try to keep, I keep a rather personal life so that it's work and home and work and home and that kind of thing. And I, I, I try not to socialize that much. Yeah, you'd ha you'd have to. We uh, uh, yeah, we Donna has, as you all know, a new baby in her life, which is DKNY. Oh, I thought you meant my which, granddaughter. <laughs> I know, that too. You are a grandma now. <laughs> Can you believe this lady's a grandma? Can you believe this? I'm so jealous. I'd like to be one. Um, but D, let's talk Can about DKNY for okay. a minute. It came out of what? Your daughter wanted some clothes I had read. And DKNY said, is wonderful. Yeah, um, it is wonderful. Basically, if people really know me, I'm very relaxed. And my weekend clothes, you know, because I, I always talk about the weekend, the beach, and hanging out and, and kind of things. And I really was looking for a pair of jeans. Yeah. And I couldn't find a pair of jeans to fit. And we all know the trauma of what oh. it's like to try to find a pair of jeans to fit yeah. us. <laughs> you know, and we want them sexy. Yeah. And we want them to fit. We want them to do all those wonderful things that all the young people look like. You know, and they, you know, they cut jeans for women. And they're probably the most unflattering jeans. You really yeah. forget about a facelift, then you really, you know, <laughs> you really want to change out. So I decided that I needed the right pair of jeans for us. Yeah. So that started DKNY. And then my daughter kept stealing my clothes. So I realized there was a, a much larger market out there that I was yeah. not really addressing. Yeah. As for the collection, it is a smaller group of people. And uh, I needed my T-shirts and my jeans and, and kind of a lifestyle of clothes. But I wanted clothes that need not be explained. Yeah. You know, how do you yeah. put this together? How do you put that together? It almost doesn't matter the way you put it together. Everything works. I kind of hear this environment with music going and people having fun and the husband wearing it and the mother wearing it and the daughter wearing it and kind of an experience of what the American lifestyle is all about. Let's see it. Let's take we a look. We have a great videotape. Yeah. We have a little uh, video and you can see Donna Karen, DKNY for resort. Oh, great color.
a denim yeah. jacket, yeah. all sort of beaded yeah. and embroidered. All right, just to whet your appetite, let's see a little of Donna Karen for resort in her main collection. Oh. <laughs> Right out. This is great. You know, resort for me is, is the kind of time that, is, it's called after hours, is the way that I always look at it. You know, whether you're hanging out at the beach or you're hanging out at home or wherever, it's not about working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's not work, you know. Yeah. And these are the kind of pieces that I find in my wardrobe that I, I live for life, you know, and, and they just transcend season after season. And the whole idea of linen was very, very new to me. I, you know, yeah, we had done, 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 I have never done linen. Well, in so. this life, at yeah. Ancline, I used yeah. to do it. And there was a time, but linen was all of a sudden a cooling of the fabrication. So uh, it's just a fabulous, you need essentials. And what um, Ariane was wearing was the bathing suit. You know, if you pack up a little weekend wardrobe, where are you going? You know, so you need a jacket, a pair of shorts, a long caftan, and a bathing suit, and off you go, voila. It's, it's a great it's look. Breathtaking. It's breathtaking. It's always. It's, it's breathtaking. Every season is. And the charmeuse is, you know, Christmas. I mean, when you think of, you know, this time of the year, it's Christmas it's time, and, and what does red say, you know? I think the, the pieces we saw just before from DKMY on video were more active. They were more spirited. This is a lot more kind of smooth, sophisticated kind of clothing. It's spectacular. Come back. We're going to talk more with Donna and see some more clothes. Don't go away. Now, Donna, this is still resort, right? Yes. This is the black and white. Group. What's wonderful about, you know, this time of the year is for designer, I think what our job is to make things special. So all these are hand embroidered jackets. <laughs> you know, the, the kind of clothes that, you know, once you purchase them, it's not about fashion being in or out. Yeah. You know, they are really investment kind of clothing. You have an embroidered jacket like this, so it could last centuries. Yeah. They were inspired from Chinese embroideries, and they were done in China as well. The whole ease of having, you know, a vest of embroidery or a little jacket. And, you know, taking that basic black linen pant, because that's all it is, or a white linen pant, you know, and just adding that speciality to it. Beautiful. Oh. Love it, audience. Yeah. Isn't Beautiful. that magnificent? Look at Oh, forget oh. it. Oh, I hadn't seen this. Linda, this leaving is now. wonderful. Yeah, this is She's grand. going to buy this, exactly. Now, what your fabric is this? This is black crepe. It's a rayon crepe, which is wonderful, and it really does feel like pajamas. And what we're trying to show here is these kind of clothes could be worn holiday north or holiday south. I always feel that, you know, you're either dressing for Christmas, you know, entertaining at home or going away, or it's, as I say, you know, just kind of have fun clothes. And the beads hanging down. It's all very pajama and relaxed. Donna, do you feel like you're a star? No. <laughs> you don't? Not at all. No. When you, when you finish your collection, do you always think, this is going to be it, they're going to find out about me, this is going to be a total disaster? Oh, absolutely. It's not you know, you never feel that, you always feel you're as good as your last collection, you know. And as writers and actors and actresses, you're dealt with a blank piece and says, okay, you know, what can I do? And then I think, you know, people generally are our own worst critics. Yeah. You know, people say, yes, you're always in the eyes of the critics, but not only that, I'm constantly evaluating, is that jacket really being made right, you know? Yeah. Is that seam really together? Is it hanging properly, you know? Why didn't I, you know, I had that one moment, I wish I said it differently, you know? I wish I cut it this way, or I wish I cut it that way. And that's probably the reason that is the creation of why I do the next collection, because yeah. I always feel that I've never really said it, Yes. You know, and I have, I have more to say. Oh, wait, let's try it again. It's like a retake. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Let's do it one, Hold one, it. one more time. Erase you know, it. get it right. Can Erase I try it, it one more time? We yeah. have another uh, clip of accessories uh -huh. that I think we're all These dying to see. All the things that Donna does. It'll just tire you in watching it. Just take a look. Now, what? here you are. 
that interesting that was supposed to be me in the car and they said to me 4 30 in the morning i said get a model yeah <laughs> right. please god get a model <laughs> But we do luggage and handbags and belts. You know, I don't consider the eyewear. I need to wear glasses, so I needed eyewear. God bless, I love Rosemary. She's just great. She kind of lives in, I look at her and she's looking at me and we both kind of do the same things. Now, Our clothes about everything, the jewelry, the shoes, the stockings, the eyewear, the belts, the bags, the hosiery. When we started our business, um, the first thing I had to do was the right pair of hose. Most people think I'm they a hosiery designer. Yeah. <laughs> That's they right. Are. Because I think if I'm known for anything, it's There's probably the hosiery. The hosiery. stockings are totally yeah. They really are spectacular. Any, they're spectacular. Yeah. You yeah. know when a woman ha gets the right pair of hose, that's like the most important thing you own. Oh, they're just. You really are a designer who designs for yourself. Oh, with that. Whatever's yeah. missing out of your lifestyle or closet, you go, I need this, I'm going to design it. Yeah, or, or I see the void there. You know, that's why before I got dressed, the first thing you have to do, you can't put on your clothes, you first have to put on your hose. Yeah. So I could not find the right pair of hose. So I had to go out and, and make the right pair of hose. And then the designing became sort of easy. You know, people talk to me about skirt lengths. The stocking and the shoe are more important necessarily than the length of the skirt. You know, if you're covered from down there, that's fine. Then everything else really doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, and people say to me about color, well, maybe it's just throwing on a piece of gold jewelry that illuminates your face. So you can wear really kind of simple clothes and you could dress it up or dress it down, you know, or the scarf that gives you drama, you know, eyeglasses you see with, you know, or you hide behind, yeah. you know, gloves keep you warm, pocketbooks you, you need, you know, a woman needs, you know, a, a pocketbook to go to work and put all her papers in and then, you know, what do you carry out in the evening? Yeah. And then, of course, they have to coordinate. I mean, the pink suit you're wearing right now. Yeah. What color bag do I wear with that? Yeah. And somebody, if a collection designer is doing bright colors, yeah. but as a designer, I did a pink suit, you can't find a pink bag, you'll probably go yeah. out of your mind. Right. <laughs> you know, true. what color That's shoes true. do I wear with yeah. that? You know? That is true. So well, it's kind of my job to figure out all those answers for yeah. women like yourself and myself who have absolutely no time to shop oh, you know true. you know you start at 7 30 in the morning and you go to bed at 12 o'clock at night thank you and you say That's okay right. you know i got a package oh. it you know and say i don't have to think now well we have some more and we're going to see it let's see our models now we're seeing oh. evening. Now this is evening for resort you know, what I found was when I did the collection for fall, I only did navy. And as a yeah. black person, I needed to have, say, well, where are my black clothes? I had to have my security <laughs> blanket. <laughs> so quickly, I ran up a few black dresses that I needed. <laughs> See? You know, so you I knew I had to get my black dresses out. This, fa this is so yeah. deceiving because it seems like the most simple dress in the whole world. But it's out of the fabric that stretches. Yeah that is crepe on the outside and satin on the inside. And somebody says, it really is an experience to put it on. Because oh. my clothes are about a feeling, not about how they necessarily look. You know? yeah. Now, Sequence your customer sweaters. also thinks of you as a guru. I mean, they oh, really yes. listen to you. They, they do what you tell them to do. There's a certain kind of power in that. Do you feel it? Do you feel responsible to the customer? <laughs> I feel sort of like, you know, sometimes a doctor for a woman, you know. Yeah. You, there are so many clothes out there, you know, yeah. and, and everyone designs good clothes, you know. Mine aren't any better, really, than, the, you know. But it's, it's to be able to communicate and help a woman out, because I know the trauma that we all go through, you know. Yeah. How you to put it all together. You have really, though, touched upon the essence of clothing with this idea of movement. Not only style, but there's a feeling, a feel of it. it you, you feel good. Your skin feels good against the fabric, as well as looking beautiful. That is a, such an amazing uh, thing. You know, I had to get that dress balance. on immediately, the sequin it's dress. Yes. You know, it is, but yeah. I took it. I know when something's right, when I, I have to wear it. It's beautiful. You know? And it's a sweater. Yeah. You know, all it is is a big sweater that you, yeah, throw on. you just throw on. Yeah, and it's casual and comfortable. Well, you're amazing. Thank you. I appreciate you're it. You're welcome Thank here you anytime. Much. Thank you so much. Thanks, ladies. A pleasure Donna seeing you. Karen, everybody. And Donna Karen, everybody. Donna Karen. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. When we come back, what you can really do to help save the environment. Stay with us.
do to make the earth a healthier place to live. We can't all travel to Brazil to save the rainforests, but we can do is make a minor adjustment in our lifestyles to help save our environment. Here to help us break some bad habits and really make a difference is contributing editor of Omni Magazine, Kathy Spencer. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, you wrote an article called Help Wanted, An Activist's Guide to a Better Earth. Do you really, right. you really think that people can make a difference? Oh, immense difference in everyday things that you do from when you get up in the morning to when you take a shower to driving to the office and every aspect of our lives we and can make a difference. Tell us some of the ways that we can do that. Well, for example, you can take a shorter shower. Yeah, that saves save energy. Water. You can, instead of standing in front of the refrigerator, the refrigerator open to decide what you wanted to eat, you decide before you open the refrigerator door. And then you're saving energy that way, too. There are more complex ways. There are super insulated homes. There are ways that you can landscape in order to have uh, fir trees on the north side of your home that will protect from the northern winds and save energy. Your, south, your southern exposures, the windows in the south of your house, if you open the windows, or I mean the shades or the curtains, and let the sun in during the day in the wintertime, that will use solar heat to heat part of your home. Doesn't that make sense, audience? Not a lot to do, right? Now, let's talk about acid rain, okay? Uh, doesn't that have something to do with insulation? In homes, you were, I was reading an article about this. Tell us about acid rain. What is acid rain? Well, acid rain comes from the burning of fossil fuels and the emissions from automobiles. Right. Uh, the gases go up into the atmosphere and come down in acid rain and affect our forests, our lakes, our air. And that comes from also not conserving energy. That comes from the automobile. I mean, one way to improve that is ride bicycles to work. There are many cities in the country now that are revamping city streets for bicycle safety. Mm -hmm. You know, all those metal grates, the sewer grates that are on the lanes and the um, streets, a lot of cities are revamping those so bikes can get over those. And L.A. is uh, building a highway over the city for bicycles only. That'll help a lot, so especially then people, there yeah. with the smog is so bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, we're catching up. Now, in our households, we can make products very easily to, to substitute for things that are harmful for the environment. And you've brought some of those things with you today to show us. And That's we're going to look right over there and we're going to see, and you're going to explain to us. What All is right. this we're seeing? Okay, this is how we make a safe, biodegradable shampoo. This is just plain distilled water, olive oil, and Castile soap. And that's a natural biodegradable shampoo that there's no toxic ingredients in it. It's safe to use, it's safe for the environment, and it's safe for you at home. Great. And we have next super washing arm and hammer, something else, sesame oil? Yes, yeah, sesame oil. You use this to condition your hair. Take a little sesame oil, put it on your hair, wrap your head with a towel for about 20 minutes, and then you use the shampoo. Now, um, the, um, also that will, you know, keep your hair uh, it's clean. It's a good conditioner. And, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. What else do we have? All right, we have a laundry detergent, but it's not a detergent. It's safe, non-biodegradable products that we can use. And first to wash we have, our clothes. Yes, it's soap, uh, which is the container with the um, white liquid in it. Right. Uh, washing soda, and that lifts out the dirt. And then we use vinegar as a fabric softener. Oh, I never heard of that. Now, the purpose of doing all these things is to do what? All right. Well, many of the products we use in our home are complex chemicals. It's very hard, first of all, to know what one chemical will do in, in, the, in a product, but many chemicals can be toxic, they pollute the environment, they cause hazards in the home. In fact, there's an Oregon study that shows that 54% of the women that stay home have a higher risk of cancer yes. than women that work outside the home. I know I'm very allergic, and uh, once I, when I was doing this demon cleaning, boy, I was sick all the time until right. I realized mm -hmm. it was the chemicals that I was using with no ventilation. It causes dizziness. I've cut and, down a lot. Um, now, how can we find out how to recycle? We well, have a number to that's call? That's correct. Uh, that's one of the things that you can make the most difference in the environment. You can call a, a environmental defense fund. We it's have one it right here. 800 ED, call EDF. So it's 1 800 C A L L E D F. The Environmental Defense Fund. Very important. Well, thank you very much for being here. And, thank you. Uh, we're going to use some of these things in our house to make it safer for us at home and the entire planet. I hope so. Thanks. Thank for being you. Here. Thank you. Linda, we'll return with some brave women.
and their inspiring stories. Please don't go away. Yes, heard their doctor say the words that many women fear most. You have breast cancer. For all three of these women, it was the most frightening moment of their lives. They battled this disease, coped with the surgery, and the chemotherapy. They all realized that the love of friends and family weren't enough. They turned to a special support group where they learned things about themselves that went way beyond their illness. Please help me welcome Phyllis Cantor, Anne Rita, and the leader of this group, Sally Berg. Welcome, all of you. Thank you. Let's, um, let's first begin with getting to know a little bit about each of you, all right? Okay. You were told... I was... Yes. Go ahead, go ahead, Sally. I was told eight years ago that I had breast cancer and had surgery and then chemotherapy afterwards. What was the most horrible part of all of that, or are they all equally as terrible? Well, I think the most horrible part is knowing you have cancer and being afraid that you're going to die. Does that fear ever go away? Gets a lot easier. Does it? Much easier, yes. Anne, very much the same thing? Yes. You found a lump in, lump in your breast? Yes. I discovered the lump myself, went to the doctor, and um, had a biopsy and found out it was breast cancer. And since my grandmother died of breast cancer and my mother's sister had breast cancer, I was also fearful that I would die. Two kids, and I just didn't want it to happen. So I just wanted to give it my best shot to make sure I was going to survive. What was the one single thing that went through your head on how you were going to beat it? Um, I really just decided that I had to do everything I had to do to make it work. And I think mostly... I did not want the treatment. I was very sick with the treatment, and I wanted to give it up after chemotherapy. the chemotherapy. And I wanted to give that up after the, maybe the second session because I was deathly ill. And my mother-in-law told me that I couldn't do it, and she made me really fight. She got really angry at me, and she said, you can't do this to us. <laughs> so I'm really glad that I continued, and with the support of the group mainly. I mean, that's really what helped me get, it, get through it. Phyllis? Mm -hmm. Is it very much the same story? Very similar. Um, I was diagnosed as having breast cancer five years ago and uh, surgery and my brother is a physician and he assured me in the way that he, the wonderful style that he has, that the surgery was the easy part, that the difficult part would be the chemotherapy. And he was right. Um, it was very difficult. Um, in addition to family and friends, the thing that made it better for me was finding Sally and having that support group that made a tremendous difference in my survival. Now, Sally, tell us about the support group. Why did you start one? Well, when I was having chemotherapy, <clears throat> I really wanted a group of women to talk to who were going through the same thing, and nothing was really available, so I decided that I would start a support group, and I thought it was a great idea, but the doctors didn't think it was a good Why? idea. I think they were really concerned that women would get together and complain and get Be depressed. depressed. Yeah. Exactly. And I finally met a woman named Roseanne Coppola who felt the same way I did and we went to the American Cancer Society and they helped us start the group. And then Phyllis was our first member. Now out of this group came something really interesting. You decided that what everybody needed was to go on an, a, a, an out an outward bound, outward bound trip. Yes. How in the world did you come up with that? Well, my children have both been on outward bound trips. And for people who may not know what it is, it's very simplistically a survival type of experience that brings you together as a group. And I thought, if I could go on something like this, I wouldn't feel isolated anymore. I just had this sense, if I could feel my hands in the dirt and climbing those rocks, that it would put me in touch with the earth again yeah. and we had a woman in our group who was very sick and everybody was very down and one night I said and what everybody needs is an outward bound trip and they all looked at me like, like you were out of your crazy. mind <laughs> exactly. and they wanted to know what an outward bound trip was and I said never mind we'll really love it and we're going and we're going and it's the we truth. went <laughs> we have some photos 
of a, a trip like this. Let's take a look. Now, this is the kind of stuff you guys did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, these were ladies that had had surgery and chemo, and they put themselves through this kind of ordeal. This is amazing to me. I mean, I, I, people who are well, really 100% <laughs> would have trouble with this. Sally didn't show us the pictures. I bet. <laughs> what, did, what were some of the feelings that you had when you were on this trip, Anne? I mean, did you want to go in the first place? No. You were no afraid. No way in the world. I was very frightened. And I really denied a lot of what I even heard about Outward Bound. I just kept saying, oh, you know, it really can't be that bad. But I was convinced that I wouldn't go. I'd hold out as long as I possibly could. But Sally convinced me I needed to go. And I'm very, very grateful that I did. But it was an unbelievable experience. I mean, I never even camped out. I was never outdoors. I'm just not the outdoors type. And the first night, 16 degrees under a tarp, it was cold. <laughs> I kept yeah. saying, what did she do to us? Yeah. But you know, it just progressively, you just went from one thing to the other. And with the support of the group, it was just fabulous. I mean, What, I, it what just did it do to change your life? Did it, did it my help life tremendously. to deal with the cancer? It helped me to get control of my life because I think what happens is when, when they, you're told you have cancer, you feel you've lost total control. You had nothing to do with that. You know, you just feel like, what's going to happen to me? And the Outward Bound trip just gave me so much confidence. And I just, it just made me feel so much better about myself. And basically that I really can do a lot more than I thought I could do. That's right. Because I thought I was very limited because I had cancer. And it just helped me overcome so much. It really did. Phyllis, how, how did it change your life? Um, actually, my life changed um, significantly once I met Sa And my instinct was that I needed a support group, that I found that, the f that although my friends and family were very close and very supportive, there was a part of it that they didn't really understand. Uh, I work with young people all the time, and I enjoy hearing them say, if I die. Yeah. And having the cancer made me fully realize it's not an if, it's a when, and maybe sooner rather than later. And so the support group started with the group that Sally began. And the Outward Bound just confirmed the feelings I got of support with other women who'd been through similar experiences made a tremendous difference in my ability to reach out and touch other people's lives um, in the same kind of way. Well, I, I think you've touched ours. We think you're great. <laughs> God bless all of you. Stay well, okay, please. Thank you. We'll be right back. Do you remember the last time you went to an aerobics class? Better yet, the last time you decided not to go? Was it because you just didn't feel like making your body do what you know it wasn't meant to do? Well, here's some hope in the form of African dance, modified. With us is the creator of Afro Aerobics, the latest exercise craze. Please welcome Maria Berg. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Now, it probably isn't the way it sounds. What exactly is Afro aerobics? Afro aerobics is a combination of traditional aerobics, probably some that you have done and people in the audience have also done, right. with African tribal dancing. Ah. I am from Tanzania, which is right. in East Africa, right. and I've been teaching African dancing for a very long time. So when I came to America, I wanted to keep the tradition alive, and yet I also have to adjust and become an American. So I took kind of the best oh. of both worlds and put it together and wanted to share my culture through aerobics with the Americans. Okay. Great. Yes. Now, what exactly is the difference between regular aerobics that we all know, well, I don't really include myself in that, <laughs> but, or, and what, what you have now... Mm -hmm. developed. Oh, there's just, it's like night and day almost. Is now, it? The number one item is it's fun. It is so much fun. You don't even realize that you are working out. You think you're just dancing. And the movements are natural movements. They come from your body. You know, you don't just kind of do your limbs here and there. They come from your body and you express yourself. Right. You know, then you don't really care how you, you feel so much. You are yourself and you never take yourself seriously. Excuse oh. me, can you tell us who this lady is? Oh, <laughs> oh this is Needy Winham. She's right. one of the main instructors of Afro Workout. We have Say a hi. Yeah. Right. 
great. That lady is going to help us. Yes, demonstrate. Demonstrate. Yes. Okay. So we're okay. Have fun. All right. All right. Okay. Fun. Okay. We're ready. All right. You're ready? Yeah. yeah. Are we going are to we try something first? here? Okay. All right. The first thing we're going to do is, you know, we we imitate animals a lot because animals are natural. You know, a giraffe will never try to be a, a tiger. A tiger will never try to be a lion. They know, you know, they're not changing their personalities like we're trying to do all the time. So That's a giraffe great. will be true to his nature. So we're trying to be true to our nature and move naturally. That is the biggest difference. They're natural moves. You might have to relearn them because maybe you forgot. But you have to, you know, to relearn them. And they come back. They do come back. So now relax. Shall put we your spread hands on your way. Yeah, no, put your feet together. I'll step then, back a little bit. All right. Yeah, we should have a little bit of space, I suppose. OK. Stop. All right. And your hands are on your waistline. Now be sure your shoulders are relaxed. You don't want them up here. Just relax. Just, just don't think twice. Just do it. All right? Now. OK, now what you're going to do is you're going to bring your chin into your neck, stretch it up, and then out, and then around. Relax. The movement comes from the waistline, all right? Bring your chin in, up, out, and around. Now let's do it smoothly. Just let go. You are making a circle with your chin. Totally relax. Think of a giraffe. OK, turn your head to the side and do the same thing, looking down your right elbow. Just easy. Don't push it. That's it. I don't think you have trouble pushing it. All right, let's go to the left side. Let me see. Are you okay. doing it? I'm doing it. I'm doing it, aren't I? Yes, you're doing it. All right, now come to the center and open your legs a little bit more. Relax a little bit more. Now, try to move more from here, all right? And do the same movement with your chin. In, up, out, and around. Just relax. Think of a giraffe. I think you can feel that it's working your spine, relaxing your neck and your facial muscles. OK, now open a little bit wider. Relax a little bit more. Don't take yourself seriously. Just fun. OK. Now put your leg. Absolutely, that's it. Now continue with your relaxing. OK. Uh -oh. Come up. OK, now let's come up again. Put your feet together. And we're going to do another animal. OK. OK, I think we'll still use the same music. OK. And we'll do the ostrich. OK, relax your shoulders. Just relax, relax. It's all right. Okay. Just relax. OK. Now bring your right <laughs> shoulder, everybody. Bring your right shoulder up, back, down, and around. Good, and your left shoulder. Up, back, down, and around. Now do the same thing with your right shoulder smoothly, one at a time. Right, and then left, and then right, and then left. Isn't, isn't a world supposed to be, like, hurtful? No, 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 I mean, it, it's not supposed to be hurtful. We're just warming up, good. don't you worry. Oh. Now open your legs, open your legs, your arms out. Right. Can we? OK, yeah. good. Just like that. Right. Now do the same thing with your arms out. Circle your shoulder. Now, this, here, this is your shoulder. Leave your arm in place. Oh, this right. is your shoulder. Try to, yes, I, somewhat. Good, your arm will move because it's attached. But still, circle your shoulder one at a time. That's it. OK, now that's fine. Now let's circle them back. Bend your knees slightly and do the same movement together. Circle both shoulders together. Keep your knees in place. Don't come up and down. Just circle. Excellent. Ooh. Now we're going to move. You got it. Now we're going to move forward, doing the same thing, OK? Do your neck movements also. So we are going to go one, move forward, two, three, and then back. All right, let's go back. That's it. It's OK. Hang in there. That's fun. Come on, Linda. You're doing OK. Come on. That's it. My shoulders hurt. Yes, I know. No, just hug them. Just hug your shoulders a little bit. It really, really helps. OK, we'll do the monkey now. OK. Monkey or gorilla. Relax your arms. Always relax. Don't, don't take yourself seriously, OK? Open your hands out and make like a claw, tight. Down on your side. You mean business now. It's the only time we can be serious. We're monkeys. OK, now pull one up and then the other. You can feel the stretch in your side. Oh, that's all oh, I like Maria. the monkey. Oh. But, but relax your face. You look like you're suffering. You shouldn't. I am. Yeah. <laughs> OK, open your legs a little bit more. Right? Now touch your toes and your armpits. And the other side, oh. one toe and one armpit. It's pull hard being a monkey. And pull and pull. This is and great. Pull. Now turn to the side. Turn to the side. Yeah, it's OK. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's go. Now we're going to pivot on the left foot and go turn. What is? 
And then back. <laughs> That's it. Come on. Down. And pull your right foot up. Pull. 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 All right. That's okay. Don't, can you feel it someplace? Yeah, can you feel great. it? Stretching right Stretching through. right over there. Don't panic. Something happened. Don't panic. Don't, don't, don't panic. Don't panic. This is, this this is, is fun. fun. Just don't right. take yourself seriously. Okay, let's do Now we're going to do something with our sit-ups, which we use the, what we call Get the up. kangas. Here. You can take one. Have one in each hand. All right, put your feet together. We do our sit up standing up because I used to hate all those sit ups. Oh my goodness, oh. they were miserable. Yeah. So put your feet together, right. tighten your stomach, bend your knees, but relax. <laughs> bend your knees, smile. It's all right. Okay, and now, now we're going to isolate. Bring your hips forward and back. Just your hips. Tighten your stomach. <laughs> Good. Now add your arms, add your arms. Let's bring your arms forward. Very funny, you guys. And then back. Right. Round your back. And then arch it. Well, and then round it as you go forward. This tighten is your stomach. beautiful. Now just keep stretching it Maria, out. Maria, Neve, thank and you out. so much. And thank and you. And Linda's going to tell us. Thank you so much. You have much. Video information on how to get Maria's video, Aerobics with Soul. Stay tuned for the end of the show. And information about Lifetime Attitude gift sheets. This is Maria's think? country, home, native country, yeah. east of Africa. That was kind of fun. I liked it. You did? Yeah, we like anything that's not boring yeah. with exercise. Yeah. It's a little different. And the rest of it really gets going. Remember, yeah. we were she rehearsing. She said that was just the warm-up. Yeah. So it, you really start to do real yeah. intense stuff. But my heart's going. Is yours? Yes. Yeah. We're Doesn't pretty tired. Much. Thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. 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 To receive Lifetime's Attitudes Tip Sheet with information on today's show, call 1-900-773-4040. Today's show and issue number is 2. The cost of the call and tip sheet is $2. To avoid ordering duplicate tip sheets, please check your issue number before placing the call. If you would like tickets, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Attitudes Tickets, 3412 36th Street, Astoria, New York, 11106. Or give us a call at area code 718-706-3575. Now, stay tuned for 30 minutes of the latest breaking news focusing on the most essential issues and concerns of women around the world on the Lifetime Weekly News, next only on Lifetime.